Hello, fellow traders. Nutty Bar Trading coming to you. And today's video, I just I was gonna I wasn't even gonna record this, but I thought, you know what? I've had a couple people asking me about the levels that I have on my charts and how I put them there and what it is. So I thought, you know what? I might as well record it. Maybe it'll help someone. And uh yeah. So that's what this video is gonna be about. And just disclosure, this is nothing special. This is not some kind of secrets of that I use to trade. I place these levels to help uh, define areas. I am personally still trying to see if there is a, a good strategy based on the levels. And it's like anything else. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So uh, please don't. Don't use them and and think this is the holy grail. That is by no means what I'm saying here. It's just we've I've had a couple of people ask about it, and I'm just getting ready to put the levels on for the week. Usually, I try once at the end of every week. I'll put in new levels just to keep them fresh. Um, but I thought you want you know what I might as well record the video, upload it, and maybe yeah, maybe it'll help someone. So that's what we are here for. Um, okay, so I, I start with the 60-minute chart. Um, I find like the 240-minute, I just, I feel like I can see a little bit better with the 60-minute chart. And I also have my drawings hidden on my 240-minute chart. So I start with my 60-minute my chart. And again, this is not rocket science. I'm basically just looking for support resistance areas. Um, one thing of note, the 60-minute chart that I'm showing you here does not show the um, after hours. It's only showing the regular traded hours. So I kind of like that. I think or I prefer to know where the gaps are. Um, you, like the last couple weeks, we've had some pretty big gap. Like here we had a big gap up. Then here we had a big gap down. Um, and I just, I like to see it without the after hours. Um, and I, that's where I place my initial levels. And then I move to the 15 minute chart, um, to kind of finalize the levels. So we'll just get started. I'll just kind of show you, um, how I place the levels and I'll do it on the 60 minute chart. I'm not going to place every single level cause I, it's probably going to take too long and I don't want to waste everyone's time. Um, I'm going to show you the 60-minute level, how I do that. And then I'm going to switch to the 15-minute chart and just briefly show how I do that because I feel like each person should kind of, you know, you might see something differently as far as support and resistance than I do. Uh, this is more just like what I use to show my levels and how I create them and how I place them. I feel like that maybe could help someone. But as far as where I place them, I feel like that's pretty discretionary um, and each trader might see it differently. So I don't mind at all if someone copies my levels, but I'm by no means saying that my levels are the holy grail or are better than anyone's anyone else's levels at all. So the way that I do it is just go up here to the drawing tool and the region highlight. That is what I use. Once you have the region highlight selected, the first step I do is just to basically uh, put it somewhere on your chart. And when you're in the 60 minute, I try to keep it pretty thin um, because once you get into the 1200 tick chart, um, yeah, that becomes pretty wide. So you don't want that taking up a lot of your screen and just being a mess. So I keep it very thin on the 60 minute chart. And sometimes I... So yeah, usually I should do it as I move this up so I can see it like basically to the very like the previous price level that we were at. And then I switch back to my 12. You know what? Never mind. First, we have to change some settings. OK, so the first thing you want to do is double click on this to bring up the properties. And then here on your attached to the first thing you want to do is do it to NQ all charts. So do that first. And then for now, we're going to keep the locked unchecked. Um, the colored area, this is all just personal preference. Change it however you want. On my 60-minute chart, I do it red. And then the outline, 
I change to uh, crimson and then just apply that. You know what? The crimson isn't right. <laughs> that doesn't look right. I see, I change it to silver. So that's what I do for my levels on the 60 minute. Okay, so just hit OK for now. And then I go back to my 1200 chick chart. And this is where I trade from. And then I just make sure that the line, you know, you don't want the line to be like this. You know, I want this region highlight to be small. Um, but the reason I use the highlight areas, I just feel like it's cleaner in a sense where it's easier to see. And then it also like, I just don't like doing the lines because price never just comes right down to a line and then reverses. I mean, maybe sometimes I guess it will, but usually there's like a, I always think of it like an area of support and the resistance. It doesn't ever where it comes right down to it. Um, also just to clarify, I don't, I currently don't even really trade these support and resistance areas. So keep that in note, keep that in mind. I do like to have the levels and I do use them, but I haven't really found that they, I really haven't found a successful strategy on trading these specific, basically just entering trades based off of these levels on their own. I primarily trade price action, um, but I do use the levels um, for different just knowing where the support and resistance is. And if we're getting close to support and resistance on a long, and I see where support and resistance is right above me, then I don't want to enter long. Like that's kind of how I use them currently. But of course, use them to however, however you see fit. So basically this is just to, you know, basically put them in the right width. That's all, that's the only thing we're doing here. Then we will switch back to the six mi 60 minute. And then we will... Basically, I start from the bottom and I move my way to the top. That's how I, that's how I always do it. You know, and here, obviously, we have the bottom. Again, if we just have a bottom tick here, um, I prefer to have my support resistance here, not at the bottom of that candle. Just personal preference. Um, okay, and then this is an area where, so once you have it where you want it, double click on it and then make sure it's locked and then do apply. And you basically at this point, you wanna have your, the width, the color and everything the way that you want it. Because now we're just gonna click on it. We're gonna do control C on our keyboard, control V to copy and paste. And now we have another line. Now where you have to click on it and unlock it, apply, and then move it to where you want it. And I have done it also where you just don't lock any of them, place everything, and then go back and lock your levels. The reason I lock my levels is there have been times when I've, in trying to zoom or drag the chart, I've accident, accidentally dragged one of my levels, and then I moved the level instead of the chart. So that is why I started locking my levels. Uh, but, you know, here, moving from the top up, I just kind of do it like this. I just keep moving up until I see a lot of prior support, prior resistance. We can see here we have resist prior resistance here, here. Um, again, this is where it's completely discretionary. Some people maybe would put it here. Um, I just kind of look for the most touched areas and visually just where I see um, prior support resistance areas. It's like I said, this is not the end all be all by no means. And then, um, uh, moving up, um, I'm going to place one right here. Um, obviously we have a lot of resistance right in this level. Um, one thing I haven't been doing that I've been considering doing is just placing one at all the even numbers where basically, like the whole numbers where we would put one at 15,300, we would put one at 15,400 and 15,500. Those levels usually are important levels, but so far I actually don't do that. Um, but I guess, yeah, to each, 
to each his own. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to stop placing. I'm going to place one here. Obviously we have one here at the previous high of day. Um, I will place more. I guess we can just quickly do it here. I will place one, you know, right here would be a lot of, we had a tough time getting through this level previously. And we went right up to it here. Um, and also the, so I'm obviously if I zoom out, um, I'm kind of focusing on like a month out on my 60 minute chart. So that's kind of how far out I go. I don't really want to go that much further out. And I always put more weight on the support resistance that is recent. So we have a lot of support and resistance here. This, I feel like, holds more weight than if it was over here. Just because it's been more recent. Um, Let me just... The only things I see here... Obviously, we have some big gap up, gap downs. This level right here would be an important level. Um, and some of these levels we will we will use when we go to the 15 minute chart. But for now, I'm going to keep this the way we have it. Obviously, then I double click and I hit apply. I just go through all of my levels and I lock all of them. I could have done this after I'm done recording just to try and speed this video up a little bit. Okay, so now you can see here, these are my levels that I we just put on. Um, and now what I'll do is I'll zoom out. And as you can see in my data series, I'm showing 15 days. So obviously the 15 days is what I'm looking at on my 15 minute chart. Um, and here again, I'll just copy. I'll copy one, paste it. I'll unlock it. And then on the 15 minute chart, I will change it to pink. Again, use your own color scheme. Um, I just... I don't know. That's what I use. Um, and then make sure we're zoomed out all the way. And then this is where I will add, you know, different levels. You know, here, you could add a level right here. Again, very discretionary. Just use your own judgment. Um, yeah, I feel, I'll, I feel a little bit unqualified in showing how to do this because I feel like the way I do it is very simple. And uh, it's not like I use these levels to make any money, so to speak. I'm not using it to trade from. So um, when I when I show videos and I do videos that are showing people like how to do things in trading, I feel unqualified um, because I've I'm obviously I'm not being I am not yet consistently profitable. So I've. There's a reason I don't do any videos of titled How I Trade because I am not ready for that yet. I have uh, I have a lot to learn yet. Anyway, we're just going to do it anyway. We're going to go through here and here. I'm going to place a level right here. And I'm just going to kind of show you what I kind of off just from a very... fast. Um, I'm going to put one right here. Um, I am going, and again, I'm just doing control C, control V, uh, to bring in another highlighted region and I am placing it. So here, like this is kind of an, a, an example, like right here we had a touch. Um, and then right here we barely touched. So I'll kind of move it down to just kind of hit a little bit of both. Um, Again, just bringing in another level. I want a level right here. Um, and at a glance, I want to be, I want a level right here. Um, other than that, I might go through and change some things yet, but that is basically how I do it. It is really not uh, that complicated. But if you, obviously when we zoom in and now we go to the 1200 tick chart, this is now what it will look like when we're trading. 
and I feel like it's still a clean enough chart that it's not distracting me. Um, but I get what I'm seeing and get what I'm looking at. So that's what I like about it. I played with lines. Um, I don't know. I just like the region highlights. So that's what I use. That's how I do it. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, great. Um, if not, and doesn't make sense, then obviously don't do it. Um, but I just thought I would record it while I do it anyway. And if it helps someone, that's great. So anyway, thank you everyone, uh, for everyone's support. Um, just, yes, thank you. And then, uh, we'll be live tomorrow morning, Monday morning. So I hope to see everyone there. Take care and have a great rest of your day. Great rest of your evening and God bless.